Good afternoon and welcome to a packed Olympic Stadium München for the second leg of this exciting final. And here come the Germans now, led by their skipper, Nobby Hagel. They must surely start favourites this afternoon. They've certainly attracted the most attention from the press with their team problems. And let's now see their lineup. The Germans playing 4 2 4, Leibniz in goal, back four, Kant, Hegel, Schopenhauer, and Schilling, front runners Schlegel, Wittgenstein, Nietzsche, and Heidegger, and the midfield duo of Beckenbauer and Jaspers. Beckenbauer, obviously, a bit of a surprise there. And here come the Greeks, led out by their veteran centre half, Heraclitus. Let's look at their team, as you'd expect, it's a much more defensive lineup. Plato's in goal, Socrates a front runner there, and Aristotle as sweeper. Aristotle very much the man in form. One surprise is the inclusion of Archimedes. Well, here comes the referee, Kung Fu Tzu, Confucius and his two linesmen, St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas. And as the two skippers come together to shake hands, we're ready for the start of this very exciting final. The referee, Mr. Confucius, checks his sand, and they're off. Nietzsche and Hegel there. Carl Jasper's number seven on the outside. Wittgenstein there with him. There's Beckenbauer. Schelling's in there, Heidegger covering. Schopenhauer. And now it's the Greeks, Epicurus, Plotinus number six. Aristotle. Empedocles of Achagos and Democritus with him. There's Archimedes. Socrates, there he is, Socrates. Socrates there, going through. There's a ball, there's a ball. We'll be bringing you back to this exciting contest the moment anything interesting happens. Well, there may be no score, but there's certainly no lack of excitement here. As you can see, Nietzsche has just been booked for arguing with the referee. He accused Confucius of having no free will, and Confucius, he say, name go in book. And this is Nietzsche's third booking in four games. And who's that? It's Karl Marx. Karl Marx is warming up. It looks as though there's going to be a substitution on the German side. Obviously, manager Martin Luther has decided on all-out attackers. Indeed, he must with only two minutes of the match to go. But the big question is, who is he going to replace? Who's going to come off? It could be Jaspers, Hegel or Schopenhauer. But it's Wittgenstein, Wittgenstein who saw his auntie only last week. And here's Marx. Let's see if he can put some life into this German attack. Evidently not. What a shame. Well, now, with just over a minute left, the replay on Tuesday looks absolutely vital. And there's Archimedes. And I think he's had an idea. Eureka! Archimedes out to Socrates. Socrates back to Archimedes. Archimedes out to Heraclitus. He beats Hegel. Heraclitus, a little flick. Here he comes on the far post. Socrates is there. Socrates, there he is. Socrates has scored. The Greeks are going mad. The Greeks are going mad. Socrates scores. But a beautiful cross mark of Eden. The Germans are disputing it. Hegel is arguing that the reality is merely an a priori adjunct of non-naturalistic ethics. Kant, by the categorical imperative, is holding that ontologically exists only in the imagination. And Marx is claiming it was offside. But Confucius laughs them with a the final whistle. It's all over. Germany having trounced England's famous midfield trio, Bentham Lock and Hobbs in the semi-final, have been beaten by the odd goal. And let's see it again. There it is. Socrates. Socrates heads in and Leibniz doesn't have a chance. And just look at those delighted Greeks. There they are. Chopper Sophocles. Empedocles of Acragas. What a game he had. And Epicurus is there. And Socrates, the captain, who scored what was probably the most important goal of his career.